Welcome to another video on data to decisions. In today's video, we will be taking this data table and create a scatter plot, which looks like this, where we have multiple series and we will also be adding labels. Now let's get started. So now I have the raw data here, which is company, profit, revenue, and then the net margin percentage. The net margin percentage is something that I calculated based on the revenue and the profit, and the data has been taken from an online website for this illustration. Now, the first step is to click somewhere else outside the table, go to insert, and then select the charts that look like this, which is the scatter, and choose the first one. And now you have an empty chart, but there's no data connected to this yet. So let's do right click, select data, and now this is where we will start adding our data to the chart. First thing I'm going to do is to create a series called tech company. So I'm going to call it tech and you can name it however you would like in your scenario, in your data set. Now I'm going to select the X axis labels. So I will select the revenue only for the tech companies. And then I go to the Y values and I'm, I want to plot the margin percentage. So I've said, okay, let's go and check the data. A scatter plot allows us to visualize and understand the relationship between two numeric variables. In this case, I have revenue and the net margin percentage. So those are the two variables that I want to understand the relationship between. So before um, we go further into understanding the scatter plot, now that we have created for one series, let's also bring in the bank uh, information. So these are the banking sector, top employees. So let's bring their revenue and net margin as well. This is the second series. So if you want only one series of data in your scatter plot, then this is what we have done so far works. But if you want to add another series, I will just call it bank or banks. And then X will be the revenue, the Y will be the net margin here. Great. So now we have created multiple series. This is how it will look by default. The first thing I'm going to do is I want to add the axis titles. So I check this box after going plus. There are multiple ways in the menu to go and do this, but uh, this is one way. Uh, and then I want to give a name the x-axis which is the revenue and then here this is net margin percentage. The next thing I want to do is to make sure that this axis is in the right format. So here I don't need to show the decimals. So if I don't want to show 30.0%, I just want to say 30% and I can right click format axis and it'll open up a side panel and here I can go and customize the number here format decimals to be zero. This makes this nice and um, it looks nice because we don't need to show extra decimals that is not going to add any value to this story. Now we have access. Let's adjust the grid lines. So I'm going to click on the grid lines. You can go this way. You can also go from here, grid lines. Uh, and I don't want to remove them. Uh, I like to just keep it there. But I want them to be very, um, you know, less visible. So I'm just going to make it maybe so I can still see them, but I'm not able to. Uh, it doesn't distract me from the main message. So I'll change both the horizontal grid lines and the vertical grid lines. And you can do so by, uh, again, there's another way to do it. You can adjust them, format them using the menu options on the right side panel as well. So now that we have done this, the next step is to actually uh, format the data points. So I will right click and but let's first do the formatting. If you go to the format, this is the fill in the line option and you should select the marker. And here you can change the size of the marker. So automatically Excel has given me this uh, marker, which is a circle and a size of five. But if I want it to be size of 10, I just change it to size of 10. This impacts the entire series. So all the four points are impacted. And you can also change it if you don't want a circle, you can change it as well. Next, you can also control 
uh, you know, the fill color by going in here and saying, I want a different color. So this is where you would do. You can put a border around your marker. And so in this case, if I want to do blue and blue, I can change that there. And now you'll see that it's a light blue um, fill with a darker blue border. Uh, so now we have adjusted the marker for the first series. Let's do the same for the second series. I can click on the uh, series, one of the points, or I can go back here on the right side to change my settings. So I can go, let's click on the chart, go back here, and then I want to change the, let's say, for example, the series, which is the little dots now. I can go to marker, same way. I'll say change that size to 10. And then the fill could be, you know, light red. And then the border could be a little bit darker, something like that. So now we have set the border and the fill and the marker. Now it's time for adding the labels. So I will right click, add data labels. You can also go plus data labels. So now by default, Excel will give you the labels this way. I want you to click on it and then go into the site panel here, label options. I actually want the labels to come from the column B, which is the name of the companies. So in that case, I would say, don't show me the Y value as a label. Instead, take the label to come from value from the cells and Excel will allow me to choose any cell. So here we are dealing with the tech company, so I'm going to select these four and then hit OK. OK, so that was wrong. I was actually in a different series. So how do I know which series when you have multiple series? I was in the bank label series. So again, bank labels, I should go back and change this label range to these four. And then if I want to switch back to the tech labels, you see that tech, we didn't even enable the labels. And that's why it's not there in this drop down. So very easy. So go back to the plus symbol here. So when you click inside the tech, uh, one of the tech data points, you can then say, I want the data labels to be enabled. And you can change where the label is. But if you go more options, it'll take you again to the right side panel. So you can go via this method or that method. Ultimately, you want to disable the Y value and then change the value from cells to the names in column B. And now press OK. So now you will have the names of the labels uh, representing the different companies. And you can change the lo location of the labels to be you know, centered or left or right. Um, so it's up to you, depending on the data sets. I mean, you, you can play with it. Um, now, the last part I want to, oh, you, we need to also add the legend. I totally forgot about it. So let's add the legend. When you have multiple series, it becomes extremely important uh, to add the legend. So the legend by default is put on the right. I like to put it on the top. And then, um, and then I will move it here because I want to add the title. So let's see, chart title. And you can add the title in this case, revenue versus margin percentage. Great. So now we have the chart exactly where we want it. So what is the purpose of doing all this? Now the scatter plot allows us to visualize and measure the relationship between two variables. So when the revenue increases, does the net margin percentage increase or decrease or remain the same? So that's the relationship that we want to measure. The scatter plot in Excel allows you to click on any data point or any series point and then say add a trend line. And so Automatically, Excel adds a trend line based on the linear regression model. And I like to look at the R squared. So I can check this box here. And it tells me 0.9222. So 92% of the relationship between these two variables is being explained by this equation. So that's a pretty high percentage. And so I'm not going to get into all the different models available here. Uh, on the right side, you will see multiple models. You can change them. That will be a topic for another video. But in this video, I just want to say that the scatter plot allows us to understand the relationship between the two variables. So I'm going to uncheck these boxes, and I'm going to delete the trend line here by clicking on the trend line. 
Similarly, we can do that for the banking uh, complex uh, data series as well. And now, if I do that, you will see the R squared is 0 0.0104. What does that mean? By a linear model, we cannot explain the relationship between revenue and net margin for the banks. Okay, so I'm going to uncheck, remove the trend line. Now, if you look at it, even by looking at it, we can see that there is some relationship within the tech companies. When the revenue increased, the net margin percentage also increased. TCS with a higher revenue, they also have a higher margin percentage. So even though it's not perfect, like I said, it's 92%, they still fall along a line um, diagonally, which explains the relationship. Whereas the banks, the four banks that we have here, they actually don't follow that. And so let's say, for example, um, in this case, this specific bank, Punjab National Bank, seems to be an outlier. If I remove this, I can see that ICICI, HDFC, and SBI, they, there seems to be a relationship. So let's confirm that if I remove the uh, PNB data point here, I can go back to the banks. And instead of using all the four rows, if I only use the first three by just selecting A and pressing OK. OK, so now I have only three in my second series, the bank series. And now let's add a trend line and then see what the R squared is. And now look at it. So it's 98% being explained. So the bottom line is, these three companies, there seems to be some relationship between the revenue and the net margin percentage. But remember, it's actually in the opposite direction. So when the revenue increases, the net margin percentage decreases. And again, I took the data from a website quickly, so I haven't sanity checked. So it's not about whether this actually represents these banks in real life or not. Uh, the focus of this video is about how do you handle this type of data? How do you analyze it using a scatter plot in your company? Now. Let's say if um, as soon as we remove Punjab National Bank, there is a relationship, like it's an inverse relationship uh, between revenue and net margin percentage. So let's take it out again, remove the trend line. So the bottom line is the scatter plot allows you to do a few things. First, you can visually see where a specific data point is along two different variables. In this case, revenue and net margin percentage. The second thing is you can see the relationship between the data points in one series. We saw that the companies have one relationship and clearly very strong relationship between revenue and net margin percentage. The third thing is you can see the differences between multiple series. We clearly saw the banking uh, sector is in a different relationship compared to the companies. And so the fourth one, which we didn't see in this example, is you see within a specific series, some clusters being followed. Um, we did see the Punjab National Bank as an outlier and every, everybody else kind of, you know, all the other three banks kind of fell in line with one relationship. But in some cases, when you have like maybe, you know, 20 or 40 different data points, you may start seeing clusters being formed, certain uh, data points kind of are in a certain area of the scatter plot. They are very close to each other, whereas another group is in a different uh, place on the scatter plot. So those type of clusters can be identified um, using scatter plots as well. So those are the four things that you can take away from scatter plots. It's very easy to create. We just created one, um, and uh, we can create similar scatter plots dynamically also. In this case, I hard-coded a lot of things. I selected specifically these values. And so uh, in a future video, I can also explain how we can create more dynamic uh, scatter plots. We can even do moving or a motion type of uh, scatter plots. Uh, if you have any suggestions or if you're interested in those videos, please voice your opinion in the suggestions below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon in another video.